Greetings, visitors to the paper prison. Although these days, I sure, I'm sure we all feel we're in a prison already, and I don't have to explain why. Um, although it's kind of funny to think one day, maybe years from now, as we look back on some of these uh, clips that we'll see me mentioning this uh, pandemic crisis and wonder what does, was that all about? Anyway, but uh, let's not bring the show down. Let's just get right into it. Uh, today I want to talk about someone who, if not is a legend, is definitely considered the master of the format and the art form. Um, you know, especially in the 70s, there were some artists that were just so prolific and had such a signature style that they are seen as the true artists of a series, whereas the other artists associated to it were actually almost seen as support to the true artists. Uh, you can think of Klaus Janssen on his long run on Daredevil, or Bob Layton with what he did on Iron Man, and I think I really have to add to that listing Joe Sinnott on Fantastic Four. Um, it's Sinnott, not Sinnott, you know, like Elliot. Thank you, Joe Rubenstein, for correcting my pronunciation. Um, this is another one where I'll have to um, probably have several mini installments about Mr. Sinnott's career because it is so long and so varied and just so rich. Um, actually, I was really torn on what to start with because really I, I, I was very much tempted to just go with Fantastic Four number six, which was his first issue he ever inked. Um, he was not the regular inker then, but he was over. He was inking over Kirby, and everyone agreed that that was Kirby. He was he was Jack Kirby's best inker. Um, I'm not going to get into that right now. I will just say I just think I think it's not always desirable to slavishly copy every one of Kirby's lines. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, comic art is alchemy. It isn't just the talents, it's the correct combination of talents. So, as is my want, we're going to start with the page that had a, a huge effect on me during my formative years, which seems to be a theme in this show. Uh, we're going to hit Fantastic Four 141, the last page of this issue, which is, it can't really be page 32, it's, it's it's 32 in the book, but I think at this point, uh, comics were only 17-page documents of art, story and art, because it was just a hard time, and they were cutting costs everywhere for dropping the page count from like 20 to 17. But this is the last page in a very dramatic storyline, which I'm not going to get into because we're talking about the art, not the story here. That's a different show. So let's look at this beauty. Uh, Joe Sinnott, like Jansen, like Layton, like Cockrum, like so many others I could mention, not uh, not only could ink, but were excellent was an excellent draftsman who could draw himself, which made it made him be this incredible utility uh, savior, if you want, if you will. But he was often uh, because it was Fantastic Four. He was often paired up with some of the best pencilers, so he didn't really have to, you know, bring fix things if you will. Um, here we have Joe inking over John Buscema. Um, it's an incredible team. Um, but let's look at this thing. Um, Joe may have uh, suffered over the years because for some reason people are starting to see brushwork as being old-fashioned, not as cutting edge, not as artful as doing everything in a pen or a tablet. Believe me, having the mastery over the brush that Joe has um, is not easy, and it is artful, and it is mastery, and it is beautiful, especially here. Um, one of the things people might nail him now or, or try to critique him now are these big, bold lines that are akin to com uh, coloring book. And, you know, I don't care those big lines have sensitivity and impact and they draw uh, just because they're a little thicker than what you're used to is not a is not a valid criticism um, but 
I am to this day just astounded at his mastery and control with a brush. So let's start looking at the top, the very first panel. Um, <clears throat> let's look at Reed's hair there. Look at those strokes. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not sick. Look at those strokes. I mean, the, the perfect parallel lines. They don't bump into each other. It's like a machine put that down, but it wasn't a machine. It was a man, a man with decades of practice and application and mastery of his craft and the understanding of the, of the tools and the medium he was using. I, I look at the Reed's tousled hair, and it is... And herein comes also another one of the critiques people put on, on Joe, which I think is invalid. It's because he is so masterful, and because he can put these lines down exactly where he wants to, sometimes it is so pristine, people want to call it sterile, a little sterile. You know, that's a matter of taste, and frankly, I am nothing but impressed by it. I don't care what you call it, sterile, precise, artful, mastery, it's impressive. Um, and as uh, you, know, you go across, it just there's just not a misstep in this page. Um, and, and also, anyone that can take thick, bold lines like that, but pair them with thin, sensitive lines and make it a, a uh, cohesive composition, not like these separate things that are next to each other but don't work. It all works together. Let's go, let's drop down and, and the, the best example of this is in Reed's figure here in uh, the bottom page. You see these kind of thick lines denoting his collarbone. He's actually denoting the plane of the collarbone, the, the top plane of his, of his torso. The same thing with the, uh, the the kind of thick lines on his bicep. It looks like he's, he's rendering the bicep. He's not rendering the bicep. He's rendering the plane of the of the bicep that is occupying. <clears throat> but in that same figure, you go to the face and look at those thin, delicate lines on Reed's profile on his nose, his forehead. Those are those those lines are delicate and sensitive, and shows that. He can do more than work a brush. Now, and then if you go down to the things figure, then that's just boldness. That's that's just, you know, in your face. He's got, he, he really knows how to work the texture of the blocks. And I don't know who actually drew this, you know, there was the pencils or Joe did it himself, but that, uh, that kinetic shadow falling under Sue's feet as she walks out the door Again, again, uh, comics is a, the trick of a good comics artist is taking these static images that do not move and gives it the feeling of movement. And that little trick with having these, this shadow that basically trails behind or follows her gives you the uh, track that she, sta you know, she staggers out of the room. Perfect. I mean, not the f first time he's done that, not the first art, probably Kirby you know, invented that, um, but God, does he do it well. So, look, I'm trying to keep these things a little more concise, a little less rambly. Uh, we will come back to Mr. Sennett's work again, because, again, he did so much, and he kept, he was the keeper of a title. He was the quality control. He kept a certain uh, house style that was desired by Marvel at the time and I don't think it was and when he left that book Fantastic Four was never quite the same for me it just didn't always you know uh, I thought it was a mistake but it's not my job it's not my book and it's definitely not my company so to Mr. Sinnott thank you for all the great work over anyone you inked and thank you for a page like this, which I will be just staring at for so long. Anyway, well, that's it for now. Looks like visiting hours is over. Thanks for keeping me company. I guess they'll be moving me to another page next time. So until next time, keep your mind out of the gutters and into the panels. See you.